was Rob Neuenschwander, June 19th, 2015, uh, cranial nerve exam. So, John, I'm going to test your uh, olfactory nerve, cranial nerve one. Can you cover one nostril? Take a deep breath. Perfect. Can you cover the other, other one? Take a deep breath. Awesome. I'm going to have you do the same thing, but close your eyes. Okay. Cover one nostril. Take a deep breath in. Okay. And the other one. Take a deep breath in. Okay. Can you tell me what that scent was? Uh, coffee. Okay. And was the intensity the same on each side? Yeah. All right. Perfect. Uh, now we're going to check cranial nerve two. Uh, I'm going to do peripherals. So I want you to look right here. I'm going to hold up a one, a two, or a five. I want you to tell me uh, what number I'm holding up, okay? Can you cover one of your eyes? Perfect. Go ahead and tell me what it is. One, one, five, one, two, five. Okay, and switch to the other one. That was my mistake. I accidentally held up a three instead of a two. One, two, two, okay, two, one, five. All right, and that was all normal. Um, cranial nerve two, we're going to do a fundoscopic exam. And I'm going to be looking for any exudates, AV nicking, papilledema, or hemorrhage. So can I have you just stare straight ahead? I'm going to be looking into your eye. Okay. And the red reflex is right there. All right, and everything appears normal in that eye. We'll switch into the other patient's eye. Okay, red reflex. All right. And this all this eye also appears normal. Okay. Now I'm going to be doing a direct and consensual pupillary constriction. So just stare right here. And this is actually going to be pupillary, uh, pupillary fatigue. And I'm looking for it to constrict and hold, which did on every time. And that one fatigued pretty quickly. And it held a little longer that time. And that one was normal as well. So now I'm going to be doing direct and consensual. So continue, just look straight ahead and shine it on the right or my right, patient's left, and both eyes constricted, switching to the other side, and this eye constricts, and his left eye constricts as well, so that's all normal. Now, if I was shining it on this side, and his left eye did not constrict, that'd be a, uh, a sensory loss, and if this eye did not constrict, that'd be a motor loss. So, now I want you to just look straight here. I'm gonna be looking for ptosis, plethrospasm, as well as convergence accommodation. So just stare right here at my necklace, and there's no evidence of ptosis. And can you go ahead and close your eyes? Looking for blepharospasm, which possibly a little bit on this eye, not much at all. And now just look right here at my finger. I'm going to be checking accommodation and convergence. So don't move your head. Okay, I'm coming back out. And the eyes appear to be accommodating, or excuse me, converging just fine. Okay. And now I want you to look at my finger and then look at the back wall. Look at that flag on the back wall. Perfect. Okay, now look at my finger again and look at the back wall. All right, that also appears normal. Um, so now I'm going to be testing um, the field of gaze. So I'm going to be doing an H in space and an X in space. So don't move your head at all. Just follow, uh, follow my finger with your eyes. And looking for any saccade movements, nystagmus. Okay, one more time. I'm gonna go back to your right. Okay, that appears normal. And now I'm gonna go up. It appears to be a little bit of difference, um, him elevating uh, versus depressing going down. Um, the eye appears to be jumping more than pursuing. I'm going to be coming checking the other side. Back up. 
one last time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> cranial nerve five, I'm gonna be checking uh, both um, pain and then also light touch. So can I see the back of your hand? All right. Can you feel that? Yep. And what did it feel like? Uh, prickly. Okay. I'm gonna be doing this on six different spots of your face. I want you to just tell me if it feels the same on each side. So are you able to feel this? Yep. And feel this? Yep. Okay, and was the intensity the same on each side? Same. Okay. You able to feel both of these? Yep. And this, was same. the intensity the same? And just let me know. Same. Okay. I'm gonna be doing the same with light touch. Can I see your hand one more time? The cotton ball, you able to feel it? Yep. What's it feel like? Uh, so. Okay. Like. And the exact same test, so let me know if the intensity is the same on each side. Yep. that also appeared normal. Um, now I'm going to be testing the motor muscles mastication. Can I have you clench your jaw? Okay. These appear strong and bilateral and temporalis also appears strong and bilateral. Can you open your, open your jaw? All right, perfect. Okay, um, cranial nerve seven. So test the motor. Can I have you close your eyes real, real tight? Perfect. Can I have you raise your eyebrows? Okay. And then um, can I have you smile? Okay, and what's the funniest joke you heard today? Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Volitional also appears normal. Can I be puff out your cheeks? All right, perfect. That appears normal as well. Um, can I have you stand up and come right here? Cranial nerve eight, vestibular cochlear. All right, so I want you to walk heel to toe. Um, just stare straight ahead, keep your arms by your sides and just walk right at me, heel to toe. That appears normal, that's fine. Um, now I'm gonna have you come back, same thing. I want you to close your eyes. Uh, I'm gonna be right here in case you fall. And then keep your arms by your side, walk heel to toe with your eyes closed. Okay. He's wobbling more, I saw the first wobble to the right side, to the presence of maybe a um, vestibular problem on the right. Um, you can have a seat right there. Now I'm gonna test your hearing. Um, are you able to hear this? Yep. Are you able to hear this? Yep. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. Can you close your eyes and just tell me which side you hear it on? Right. Right. Left. Right. Left. Okay. And that appears normal. He's able to get it right every time. However, if he didn't, I'd proceed to do a Weber's and a Renee's test. Uh, Weber's, I would sound the tuning fork, place it midline of his skull. And if the sound lateralized to one side, I would test that side with the Renee's. So let's say it lateralized to his left. I would do a sound on the mastoid and ask the patient to tell me when he can't hear it any longer. Then I'd come and test air conduction after the bone conduction. If he's able to hear it in the air conduction, um, then that must mean that he's got a uh, bone conduction loss on his left. Um, however, if uh, bone conduction was longer than air conduction, um, he would have a sensorineural loss on the other side. Um, and then, let's see, cranial nerve 12, um, we're going to be doing uh, testing your tongue. <clears throat> so um, what I want you to do is uh, open your mouth and stick your tongue out. I'm looking for atrophy, fasciculations which looks to be a little bit of fasciculation, more so on the patient's right side. Um, and then I'm looking for uh, muscular strength. So can I have you uh, push against me on this side? Perfect. And push against me on this side. All right, very good. Now I'm gonna have you uh, open your mouth and I'm looking for palate elevation. So just lean your head back a little bit. And say ah, uh, ah, uh. say ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. ah. Okay. There wasn't any fatigue, but it looked like um, he was actually deviating over to that side, which means that he might have a weakness on this side right here. Um, last one, I'm going to check cranial nerve 11, uh, which is going to be um, trap and SCM. So I'll, can you have you uh, lift your shoulders into my hand? Okay. Traps appear strong bilaterally and test SCM, can I have you turn to your right? Okay, and turn to your left. That appears strong bilaterally as well. That's the end of the cranial nerve exam.